I went to a school that was predominantly black when I was growing up. And when I first saw the first white kid, I was like, what is that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> I act differently around people who aren't my race. Three, two, one. I think the most important thing is just to authentically be yourself, and I don't think being around people who don't look like you should be a reason for you to act any different. Yeah, for me, I guess it's like um, within the confines of like the workforce. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> I was thinking code switching. Because if you show up to a, um, a meeting talking like this, they're like, uneducated, got it. Mm -hmm. They'll use the slang to sell the products and to tweet and to get the clicks and stuff. But like, as soon as a worker's there who's authentically from the area and talking like people from the area, it's like, ooh, we don't like that. You know, because it's always like, well, be yourself and tell you yourself. And then it's like, oh, I don't like yourself. Unfortunately, in a lot of the areas of work, it's like you, you almost have to like lie to these people to be like, I'm a robot. I'll like, you know, I love your company. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's sick. It's sick. But it's, it's like, true. you have to give you, you it's know. It's true. Yeah. Like, I feel like code switching is one part, but also like there are certain parts in my own community that aren't accepted that when I'm around different people that look like me, I can express myself differently. Like, I feel like if I talk a little proper, sometimes I get a little slack for it from my side of the family. But when I go out into the world, sometimes I like EDC, I like tech music, I like, you know what I'm saying? See, for me, I feel like it has nothing to do with race. It more has to do with just being professional. Like, if I'm at work, then I'm obviously going to be a little more proper, you know, a little bit less slang and all of that and just more careful with my rhetoric but I don't think it has to do with race the only thing I will say is like I work in political media so I'm on camera a lot so people already know who I am and what I'm coming with but that being said it's like when I'm around other black people because I'm a Republican sometimes they tend to be really standoffish with me or think that I don't understand the culture and all this different stuff so sometimes I have to feel it out like are these people who are just gonna call me an Uncle Tom or are these people like I can actually just keep it all the way real with so that's the only time I feel like I act differently different because of race. You know, I, I also work in political media, but as a leftist, and I honestly feel like I've definitely benefited from being able to be in spaces where I've been able to be authentically myself, and I definitely think that's a privilege, especially where I like grew up is just like something that's regularly happening that people have to go through. But personally, I think I've been able to, especially now in a business side and now my new workplace, I feel like I don't have to adapt my language to make people like respect me or understand where I'm trying to come from, you know? At what point is it like, damn, we can't even really have conversations without buttoning up and being like, oh, this is how we, we have to ha talk like this because so they'll listen or like regard us as But do you people. think that's racial or do you think that's I just... Think, I don't know that if, I don't know that it's, because I'm right, I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen you, we've seen I know, you I, I, think, you know, I don't know exactly where you're going. <laughs> I don't think it's intrinsically rooted in race, but I think just the way the social genetic makeup of people are, I think just by way of people of specific races speaking a certain way or being perceived a certain way, it just, it tends to be more often than not rooted in race based off of like urban black Americans. Yeah. I think most people have barriers they put up when they get introduced to a new group. I went on disagree instead of strongly disagree because like there have been situations where I get introduced to a group of someone of a different race and like, yeah, at first I'm pulled back, but once I get comfortable with them, those walls come down and then, yeah, that's where my true self comes out. For me, it really uh, depends because uh, I've been shooting music videos in the hood, so I really need to basically adopt myself to become a black person. So for me, it's not a problem like meeting new races. I always like vibe and chill with people. Do you think adapting yourself to those different ethnicity, ethnicities is like something that's required to um, foster like a successful relationship? Like I would say it's really more for your survival because you know like if you are the only white guy on like on set and like there's like people with like guns and stuff and you know you just really need to like fit in and just be chill with it. Mm -hmm. You're from the Ukraine, right? Do you feel like being, like not having grown up with American culture as a whole, and then especially not growing up with our subcultures, 
Do you feel like that's influenced the way you move when you're moving between our subcultures? My like mentality is kind of mixed because like from the age of like 13, I really started to, to learn English. From that, I really learned a lot. Like I really got the American like mentality more. And basically like my mentality is like mixed because like in uh, Ukraine, if, uh, if we see a black person, we call them the N-word. Mm -hmm. And from our side, it's not offensive. Like we say it not from a offensive way, but some people can because you know, like you don't see a black person there. I can understand that because I went to a school that was predominantly black when I was growing up. And when I first saw the first white kid, I was like, what is that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like it was a white girl with like red hair and I was like, whoa, I've never seen this before. You know what I'm saying? So like, I understand that like when a white person comes to a predominantly black group, then you're going to try your best to adapt to that, to our culture, to be like, okay, hey, I get along with you. This is my way of like telling you like, hey, this is, I'm like extending an olive branch basically. So yeah. Personally, not to sound triggered, but I just don't like the notion that you're becoming a black person by pretending to be hood or no, adopting a hood mentality like because thing. not all black people are hood, not all black of people course. are ghetto. I understand what you're trying to say, and I don't know if it's a language barrier, so I don't want to like come at you like you're saying something racist, but I just really am anti-black people being defined as ghetto and hood, because there's a lot of classy black people out yes. there. Yes, there's a lot of intelligent Afro-Americans out there, and it really like depends on like where you grew up in. Also, if you are hood and ghetto like me, you can also be all those things too. White people also experience race-based prejudice. Since you guys probably don't know, I have lived overseas. I've lived in Asian countries. In Japan, um, there are certain restaurants and stuff like that that you could walk into. You can see people dining in the restaurant and they're gonna tell you they're closed just because you're white or you're American. So the idea that white people can't really experience racism kind of contradicts the very definition of the word because um, the definition of racism is prejudice based on one's skin color. White people do experience it, but to a different degree. While I do think that our white brothers and sisters in Christ can experience racial-based prejudice, I don't want to overlook the nuance of that prejudice because it's not necessarily rooted in anything systematic or anything that's gonna actually have long-term effects, knock on wood, that are gonna like debilitate a race or, or inhibit their chances or possibility of succeeding or being seen as better than POC. I definitely think it's a non-issue, racism towards white people, especially specifically, I wanna, like in America, I don't think it's something that needs to be highlighted as an issue that is a constant threat to lives, day-to-day -day well-being, pro progress and success in life in general, because it's not something that's gonna inhibit you, and you don't have to walk out your door and think, I'm about to be attacked, like people of color do every single day. Mm -hmm. I do agree that white people haven't been put through centuries of hell like black people were, but prejudice towards white people 100% exists. Like whether it's in TV, if it's in movies, like if you watch predominantly black media, there's a lot of roasting towards white people that if it was the other way around, that would never be acceptable today. Then you go on social media like TikTok and you look up white people are bad. You will see videos where they're attacking white people for things that their ancestors did 200 years ago. There are societal benefits at this point for being a person of color and that those negatively affect white people. People. Like if you look at affirmative action, diversity quotas in the workplace, all these different things, they lower the bar for black people but then increase the bar for white people. However, I think where some of the issue comes is because a lot of marginalized groups and people of color back in the day went through so much worse that it's easy for us to discredit the prejudice that white people now deal with today. I think like on an individualistic level, like yeah, white people get hate all the time. But I think if you zoom out and you look at the big picture, it's a little bit different. And like talking about like YouTube having, you know, racist content for anyone out there, it's like I would have to go and seek that out versus it like coming to me. That's versus like on Twitter. Against white people? Yeah, I would have to like look for a video being like, oh, people who hate white people. I agree. Like versus like Twitter, I don't have to scroll very long before I see some person making some out of pocket comment about yeah. and regulation being lifted so people can see that even more so right. absolutely that's 100 percent right and even saying affirmative action statistically and on paper white people white women were benefiting more from affirmative action at colleges than 
any other demographic. So I also don't think that's fair to say, but I definitely get what you mean. And mm -hmm. again, I think it's the prejudice is still there, though. And I will say that black people do deal with prejudice. I mm -hmm. think every demographic deals with prejudice. There are racist people everywhere. Like, I just don't think systemic racism is an issue anymore in today's society. Mm -hmm. But I do think that there are racist people out there. I think that there's a really important distinction our language is constantly evolving, and you were talking about the definition of racism. Our societal definition has changed to include a systemic part of it. And I completely disagree with this idea that people of color don't have systemic things against them still. Because the fact that we still have the KKK, the fact that we still have these things, and they are in positions of power. As long as that exists, and as long as that's a part of our country's like makeup right now, which it is, and that's our power structure, I don't feel like you can honestly <clears throat> deny systemic racism against the black community, which is why prejudice is so different from racism. I don't think white people can experience racism in this country, but we can experience prejudice mm -hmm. based on the societal definitions we now use. Being sexually unattracted to a race is racist. I think where the line gets drawn is when, if a white male is sitting there swiping and he's just like, I don't like black girls, they're all ugly. They have too big a lips. I think that's where the line gets drawn, but you can't really help what you're attracted to. Like my fiance is Mexican and it's like, I like him for who he is, not how he looks. I think that we are conditioned to um, be attracted and to respond to people that we grow, on, grow up and around with. So homogeneously, we grow up with people who look like us. So when you move into dating and things like that, statistically, you're going to be attracted to people that you grew up seeing, right? However, when you are discrediting um, a certain race for whatever reason based off their ethnicity, meaning everybody who did exist, is existing, and will exist from that race, you are not feeling anything. Cute, I don't control your body or your thoughts, but on one hand I'm like, let's maybe unpack that. Also, where's my camera? To all the girls that's putting this in their bios, that's none of our business. Stop doing that. Keep that to yourself. We don't want to hear that. For me, I think that like we're talking about conditioning and how we grew up, right? Mm -hmm. If you go to like South Africa, for instance, which within some of our lifetimes had apartheid, if you grow up in that, especially as a black person, where you're constantly being mistreated by every single white person, and you're conditioned to be like, white person, no thank you, I don't think that's racist. I agree, and I obviously I'm, I did not grow up in South Africa with apartheid. Yeah. However, like I said, I the nickname extreme. of my town was Clancy. Like a lot of my interactions growing up were incredibly racist, and I'm dating a white guy. So I totally get what you mean. I don't want to discredit black people or anyone who's had those kind of situations because it's not that they're not dating white people. It's yeah. definitely it's more like they're cautious. I think you used the perfect word earlier. Is it conditioned Ooh. or? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I actually, I was thinking about it on the terms of me being a black woman. I feel like it's a lot different when it is a black woman going into dating someone that is not of their race. Um, I can tell you from my experience with dating Hispanic men, white, whatever. They've only seen Jerry Springer and Maury. So it's like they have a whole different idea of what a black woman is. Like before my husband changed a lot, one of the comments made to me was he was afraid of me going to his house with braids in my hair. Yeah. Because then they would assume that I was a different kind of girl instead of looking at me for who I am. I have been denied access because of my race. I can go anywhere, I can sit down anywhere, and I am not gonna be denied because of how I look. And I would be ignorant to not admit that. And I'm gonna counter that with we are justifiably not let into spaces. And our whiteness takes away access to things like powwows. And there's an island in Hawaii that's only for natives or for like safe spaces for black communities or whatever else. We are justifiably denied access because of our skin. Period, we love the nuance. The thing about Hawaii though? Yeah. Hawaii is still in land. I believe that they have every right to be able to say only we're allowed to go here because that was theirs. It was literally stolen land that was stolen by white people. Yes. No, but that's why yeah. it's justifiably, it's still denied access. Yeah. But it is justifiable, 100%. Don't yeah, let me in. Yeah, it's denied access, but it's justifiable. But it's yeah. like in my own day to day life, I could go anywhere. I can sit down anywhere. I can go read a book in a library. I can go to Starbucks. People don't fear me because of how I look. And so they don't feel the need to be like, you can't be here. But like in, in your day-to-day -day life, are you being denied access? Like, are you trying to go to that island? That no. they won't let you, okay. Then I think that's a really good question. Like, am, like, like ha has it happened? Um, I guess. 
Because, like, are you say, seeking yeah. those spaces then? Not necessarily seeking them. If I am already aware that this is like, hey, this is for us, not for you. I'm not gonna show up and be like, yeah, but like, yeah. I'm a cool white person. But there are spaces that we are not allowed and I think that's okay. No, it is okay. But if you're not actively seeking to be part of those circles, you're not being denied access to them. I will agree with that. It's sh sure, and I, like, and I can say that maybe those are not the best examples, but like, I think especially because my social circles are predominantly people of color, there are definitely things where they're like, where I've had them be like, this is not a conversation for you. And I'm like, okay. I have had those experiences. I'm okay with them. I want to be clear. Like, I think there should be spaces that aren't for me, and that is okay. But they've existed and they've been in my life. I have just one really specific example. Otherwise, I feel like in general, I'm not denied access because of my race, just in my experience. But I had an ex whose stepfather was wildly racist, like Nazi memorabilia, like mm. just insane individual. Oh and I was never allowed over her house because yeah. of him. And the one time that I kind of snuck in, he was staring at me through the window. And I'll never forget that yeah. in my life, the way that man was staring at me through the window and then cursed out his kids for having me in the house. That man's now in prison for doing God Something. knows what, <laughs> but uh, it's where he belongs. I was looking for funding for, um, for my film and most of them are for colored people and I totally understand that and there is like not many that I found that are for like everybody. My mind would be like, you know, uh, damn, I cannot do it. Like I cannot apply to it. But from the other side, I understand that the black community, like you guys need to get, get your movies out there. If anything, I feel like I've been invited too much. You know, I, I, I feel real. like I'm kind of like an undercover agent where yeah. I'm like, like because I talk a certain way or because yeah. I present myself a certain way, they assume like, oh, I could say this 100%. in front of you. And I'm like, what'd you say? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a form of tokenism. I've never, I've never really it. been. I, no, I'll say that too. I've been yeah. tokenized so Amen. many times. I'm like, I don't want like, that. We right? have to have you here. We need young black representation. And I'm yeah. like, yes, yeah, so I'm going to stay home. Yeah. <laughs> I am proud of my race. Three, two, one. I will go first and I will stand 10 toes in. I was just being ironic to I stand think. over there. Okay, baby, <laughs> I, like, I was like, please no. No, I'm like, I, I, I tried a little bit. I'll be I think messy. that like, and I'll just keep it specific to, to my experience of what I know. As black Americans, we're pretty much the top culture that gets replicated, mm -hmm. referenced. People scoot in and scoot out because they want to seem cool and interesting and stuff. And I think that that's so kind of us to like, kind of like be beaten down for so long and be kind of separated from our African roots, create names for ourselves, culture, language around our identities as black Americans and have that be a thing that's just reverberating across the globe. I think that's so cute can never be replicated, can never be understated, and um, I love that about it. That was kind of the start of my like thought process too, like just the basis of being torn down so adamantly, so regularly for hundreds of years in law even, like it is insane that we are here today to even be on camera, to even be in a place with other white people. Like it is a beautiful thing that we have been able to flourish in such dirt like literal filth and grime that our ancestors had to go through and even our grandparents had to go through. Like in my eighth grade yearbook I saw recently it said like the South will rise again. Like, and this was 2015. So like this is such a day to day thing and I am proud to be black and it's hard to say that. Like it was hard to say that as a kid like or else I could be called the N-word, I could be reprimanded and it's, I feel so blessed to even be able to think that. Everybody needs to be proud of their race and stop this like racist bullshit because like, you could be green, red, black, white, Hispanic, like, it doesn't matter. I agree with, like, what you're saying because my own personal belief is that at the basis of who we are is that we're all just people. We're not a skin tone. But because of those before me, I now have to fight back against the idea that all white people are racist. I remember being in fourth grade and learning about the Holocaust for the first time and saying, I don't want to be German anymore. Meanwhile, my mother's whole family is German. American history, you look at things like slavery, you look at things like um, Jim Crow laws, segregation. There is so much awful stuff that has happened and is still happening in closeted ways that I cannot be proud of the way that I look. Yeah, for me, like, 
I am proud of who I am, like who I grew up to be, like I like who I am. But like, if I were to say I'm a proud white man, like I don't even know what that means. Like, <laughs> there have been zero racial hurdles in my life. Mm. Now, like, I'm a proud gay man because like I've had to go through shit to mm -hmm. get to where I am now. And you know, even to that point, so much of queer culture comes from black culture, so mm -hmm. thank you. You're um, welcome. <laughs> yeah. I want to be proud of the things I've done, the people who I've touched, whose hearts I've opened up. I feel like it's beyond our race. I feel like what it is is our experiences that make our light shine through. So that's what I'm proud of, actually, yeah. I think that there's a really big difference between being proud to be black and being proud to be white. So being proud of your culture, beautiful thing. Like, be proud to be Ukrainian. I'm proud to be Slavic. The black community is different, and the reason it's different is because their culture, specifically black Americans, their culture was stripped, like, stripped away from them when they were brought over here. So then the culture became being black American. You're, like, the race became cultural. I mixed that up, so sorry. No, about the no, but like, yeah. so I think that there's a really big difference between like, I am proud of my people, my people are Slavic, versus I am proud of my race. It just gets convoluted because black Americans, the race has become the culture because mm -hmm. the culture was stripped away. I also think oftentimes when you talk about white pride versus black pride, oftentimes mm. black pride is rooted in like love and like perseverance of like mm -hmm. culture, customs, language and things like that. And white pride is often rooted in like black hate, yeah. black Facts. hate, Facts. Asian hate. So I think that's like an interesting um, nuance to not yeah. <laughs> overlook. No, and it's, I think that's such an important point. I think there's a difference between like, I'm proud and therefore I'm better versus I am proud of what we have overcome. Yeah, and then the whole idea of white pride started with people who think the Confederate flag is personality trait. <laughs> so how can I be proud of that? Drag, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that this applies to any of you, but I meet a lot of white people, particularly white liberals, who will actively say that they're ashamed of being white. And that is wild to me, because how can you look at your past? And because, yes, your race did terrible things in the past, but you shouldn't define yourself as that. If anything, you should look at that and reflect. So do you think white people should be proud to be specifically white? See, I think that's a really nuanced question when you're white because I think you guys had the valid point of ethnicity is different because like white isn't a collective culture in the way that black is because black people have been grouped together and have a similar experience but like white like Italian American you should definitely be proud of being Italian American you should be proud of being Slavic American you should be proud of your lineage but just to say oh I'm proud to be white like yeah that has a weird connotation to it because it's not a collective culture but what I really want to emphasize is that you should not be ashamed of being white in the way that a lot of people are. Mm. Yeah. Or maybe you should. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> you that one is on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>